Throughout indentureship, the number of men who crossed the Kalapani outstripped the women three to one. A strong caste system, traditions of child marriages, and the protective extended family norms kept the women of India in their villages, encouraged by the beliefs that indentureship was a temporary arrangement. But as contracts were extended and hopes of returning to India diminished, women were encouraged to make the trip. For those who brave the dark waters, the numerical deficiencies endow them with a unique bargaining position for the life that was best for themselves. Those somewhat free agents working for their own wages, some unavoidably became victims of the system. Punima recalls the treatment of women on the estate and the anger of her father when an overseer whipped her young and tired mother. And when them go to work, them working, breathing, the driver come and hit my mother. When them hit my mother, my father say, you know, I have no right to hit my wife. Because India rule is that. He say, them tell my father, the woman, and them tell my father. He say, look how he hit Bhauji. He say, nah, we want to go India again. He, from Pitimon, them start to come San Fernando. From San Fernando, them watching the sea, very high road to pass, very high road. In the sea, you go get road. Years later, some women found ways of paving roads through the sea from Trinidad to India, not as SKPs, but as young students who would become torchbearers fulfilling a desire not necessarily their own. Like Rajande Ramkisun, a young Debe girl who became the first female recipient of a Jerningham silver medal while at Naparima Girls High School in San Fernando. Her father's dream took her to Prince of Wales Medical College in Patna, Bihar, where she successfully pursued a career. She received nine first-class honors and with them nine gold medals during her scholarship, an unbroken record held previously by her Indian professor who received eight first-class honors. I did not choose to study medicine. My father told me to study medicine, and being a, an obedient daughter, I did it. Gynecology is a speciality, and with her distinguished work in the field, Rajande Ramkisun is today the first woman in the world with the title of fellow from the London-based Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. She's worked in Europe, North America, and Asia. It was in Hong Kong, Rajande Ramki soon identified an association between ectopic pregnancies and the use of the intrauterine contraceptive device, considered a breakthrough for obstetricians. She is an established poet whose work has been published in more than 15 anthologies, journals and magazines from London to the West Indies. Their ink wrote the lusters of her life, marked hope with her hand on the limbs moving in her womb. Despite her achievements, however, the world has not been an easy playground for Rajande Ramkisun. The fifth in a family of nine children, she virtually struggled to reduce her father's disappointment, who would have preferred sons instead of six daughters, who were allowed to attend the primary school only because of its close proximity to the family house. Secondary education away from Debe was not a welcome proposition by Father Ramkisun. Late arrivals from San Fernando led to the abortion of two of his daughters' quest for higher learning. Young Rajan Day, fearful of a similar fate, masterminded a plan. We would arrive home sometime, sometimes at 8 p.m. the night. Now my father would be very worried and frustrated and I could not understand why he used to be so because nothing was wrong with me. I mean, I, I just arrived late. That was all that, all that had happened. But he used to be worried 
and would threaten that he'd never send me back to school the next term. And I used to get very worried. And I knew that he would make good that threat because he had already um, stopped my two elder sisters from going to high school for the same reason. So I devised a secret plan in my head. And I said that if I placed first in class at each term, he could never send, he could never stop me from going to school. And if he did, I would take the report to my headmaster, the DBCM school, for whom my parents had the greatest respect and he was bound to send me back to school. It so happened I always placed first and they were very happy and they never stopped me from going to school. Many Indo-Trinidadian female pioneers would endorse such an experience. Like Sheila Mary Tilaksing, the first female Indo-Trinidadian graduate in law, who unlike Rajan Day, grew up in an urban middle-class business family. Taken to school by a chauffeur, was not a benefit to young Sheila as much as it represented the instructions of a father who insisted on that yoke of protection. It was Sheila's mother whose influence took her to read law in London at a time when Indo-Trinidadian family fortunes were reserved to educate the boys. Her age over her young brothers was her ticket to Europe and the decision to secure business interest in the family's pioneering cinema industry was her mother's successful argument. Of necessity, Sheila Tiluxing had to painstakingly conceal many girlhood dreams, including the hope one day of becoming a famous artist. We had a family of girls and just two boys who were young. And um, she felt that she needed someone to um, go into, uh, to be more educated, for, to, to manage the business and all that. So she insisted that I go to study law. My father was kind of reluctant, um, but he went along with it. Out in London on that one date with destiny in 1947, she returned home a lawyer who was called to the bar in 1952, concentrating on conveyancing and property law, dealing mainly with land litigation matters willed to the sons of Indo-Trinidadian families. Sometimes it's very difficult to make them see reason that uh, not everything they wanted could be legally done uh, the way they w Sometimes you have difficulties in translating their ideas and their desires into what can legally be done. Sheila Tiluxing also served as a lecturer and examiner at the Hugh Wooding Law School and is considered an inspiration to many young female aspirants in the legal profession. It is with a sense of pride that I see so many female members of, uh, of our community um, uh, graduating in, in law. More than a trailblazing attorney at law, Sheila Tiluxing remains unconventional in another sense. Still unmarried and with no regrets, she's living proof against the stereotype of the domiciled and docile East Indian wife. If anything, this generation of their Indo-Trinidadian counterparts would prove that as much as they valued family life, a destiny in marriage with children was not the only option available to them. And the intention was never that, to, uh, to sacrifice one for the other. <laughs>